It's my view that the Bristol Mark County was granted a franchise license at 43 Woodchurch so, Road. Uh, it would be like a green line that I can be rejected to prevent some crime insurance based upon the enforcement action that we've already had to take against them as other premises. It should be noted that there are already a number of license grants within that facility, um, and I believe I've seen that there will be some further discussion on that. Um, I think we'll provide alcohol for consumption both on and off the premises. Um, the location of this premises is in, in an area covered by a proposed uh, designated public places order, uh, DPPO, uh, which is currently being consulted on. Um, Merseyside Police have provided evidence to suggest that that area um, requires extra police powers, therefore, in DPPO consultation. It should also be noted that the location of this premises is in close proximity to Oxford Road, where Merseyside Police and other agencies, including licensing, um, do experience alcohol related crime and sort of problems. It's not suggested that Mr. Mark Hand is in any way linked with those problems, um, but it, the grounds of the license from the head is not likely to alleviate the problems. But whilst it's acknowledged that Mr. Mark Hand has put forward some suggestions in his application uh, as to how he should run the premises uh, through his appeal. Uh, should be granted the license, I, I would request that Mr. Mark Andrews recent offences uh, to the premises be taken into account when the committee may make a decision. Uh, I, I would be asking the committee uh, to be minded to refuse the application uh, on the grounds that uh, Mr. Mark Andrews has not demonstrated so far to ourselves that he's able to run the premises um, lawfully uh, and uh, correctly. However, if the subcommittee was minded to grant the license, I believe a number of stringent conditions should be placed upon the license to ensure the uh, licensing objectives were promoted. Uh, in addition to the suggestions put forward by Mr. Mark Andrew, um, I've listed the four conditions there which Mr. Jordan has already adopted, um, and the reason I'm getting to the old and put there before it was put forward that Mr. Jordan spoke about. Um, I, I, I suggested that the, the DPS must hold the board for designated defence and supervisors. Uh, that's a qualification that goes above and beyond the person license that's specific about that role. Uh, four members of staff employed for premises must hold the board in response to alcohol retailing. Uh, Mr. Jones suggested that um, yeah, staff may be taken on without them selling alcohol with the use of gaining that qualification. What I would say for that would be, if that was to be the case, I would, I would, I would wonder how that would be managed if Mr. Um, uh, Mark Andrews wanted that premises just to ensure that only the people selling alcohol should be selling alcohol. Um, if, if there are only going to be three employees and the premises is open seven days a week for this number of hours, um, it's the point of view that it has the third one I put forward is that all staff must receive regular training, uh, including the licensing objectives, uh, licensing hours, age restricted sales, <coughs> and all the written record must be kept of all of that training. Uh, and it should be conducted with all staff every six months at a minimum. Uh, the last one I put forward was in relation to the CCTV, not particularly because of the problems we've had with Mr. Mark Andrews' public school. Um, so I, I said that all staff must be trained on the use of the CCTV system, uh, including accessing the footage and transferring it to forcing the media, uh, to be provided to a licensing officer or police officer on the quest. Um, Mr. Jordan suggested um, one member of staff who was on duty all the time to work with train. Uh, again, there's only three members of staff. Um, it might be difficult to only have someone on duty. Additionally, if the subcommittee was managed to grant the license in relation to the application, I believe that the hours uh, should be reduced from those of the um, suggested, I suggested the hours uh, in 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. Uh, daily. Um, perhaps in the future, if the license was granted and Mr. Mark Hansen demonstrated that he was able to actually keep to the hours uh, and stay with the law, perhaps he may be inclined to uh, apply for their license. Just before I bring this 
decided to try and, and pick Andrew, you'll, be, you'll come in in due course, okay? Yes. It's a four procedures, so you got to have your chance to say something in due course, okay? Sergeant. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, this is Mark Andrew. I was invited to attend what's well, indeed taken an interview on Thursday, the 3rd of April 2014. Then we receive an application, we will invite the applicant in uh, and go through a procedure with them whereby we ask them questions about their application, uh, about the finance of the application, what we call due diligence issues such as their understanding of the Western Act, the Western objectives, making it clear to them about uh, employing people who are legally entitled to work in the UK and not purchasing uh, illegal or illegal health So, for that purpose, Mr. Mark Andrews requested to bring with him a copy of his lease uh, and paper to prove the lawful origin of any money that he had invested in the store in order to satisfy the requirements of the Proceeds of Crime Act of 2002. When the applicant attended the interview, he did not have with him any of the requested documentation. He stated his purchase the lease for £5,000. He was going to spend another £2,000 refurbishing the store and that the rent would be £900 per month over his five or seven years. The applicant advised that the request of documentation was available from his solicitor. When the inquiry was made to the solicitor, it transpired that the lease had not, in fact, been signed and remains unsigned to this day. Uh, and that there was an illegal matter to be addressed because there was a covenant on premises preventing it from becoming an off license. As has been discussed, the premises used to be a freshers off license, and when it ceased to be so, a restrictive covenant was placed on the premises in relation to its future use. Consequently, the requested documentation was not available from the applicant's solicitor and the requirements of the proceeds of the Crown Act have not been met. Then decided to be making a representation against this application as it has been unable to establish that an offence under the proceeds of Crown Act 2002 will not be made out as a result of the applicant's attempt to acquire this premises and obtain a premises license. In relation to public safety, uh, the proposed premises is near to an area frequented by street vehicles and only half a mile away from the local YMCA area of South Lane, where many of the street vehicles live. The problem suffered by people who live, work, and visit the area due to individuals who misuse alcohol is well documented. Uh, the safety of the public is compromised by the he behaviour of these individuals and the increased availability of alcohol.
Sorry, could you just, could I ask you to, the purple dots, what do they represent? Same. They're all violet. All, all, all the dots. All the dots are violet. Regardless of the colour, they're, they're, they're violet. They would be different categories of violet. So whether it be a common assault, actual bodily harm, uh, a sexual assault, or whether it's a violent crime, they're all violent. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
What are the licensing steps? Okay. Awesome. There are four. four. There are four. four. four.